In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is Saturday, the 26th day of February. Dear men, wherever you are, I salute you. Hope you are well. Keep sharing this reflection. We are getting deep into it. Dear men, we must have a conversation. Remember, I am not talking to men who go to church. I'm talking about sons of God. Sons of God. Sons. If you are a man created by God in his own image and likeness, I want us to have a conversation. You can later take this message to your churches. Share it in your various groups of men. But please know, this message transcends all the generation, I mean all the denominations. It doesn't matter which faith you subscribe to. God is interested in your soul as a man. You are a son. So, in chapter 33 that we have read, verses 1 to 11, God has the first expectation from men. Please men, God expects us to go for him. To go for him. Now, I need to, to, to read for you because this is important. I want to read for you verse 1 and 2. That is when you realize how, how sweet and beautiful this conversation can actually be. Dear men, come, 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 come. Come, men, we have a conversation. I'm loving this. Verse 1 and 2. The Lord told Moses, you and the people whom you have, whom you have brought up from the land of Egypt are to go up from here to the land which I saw to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I would give to their descendants. That's verse number one. Verse number two. Driving out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, and Hivites and Jebusites, I will send an angel before you. Dear men, we are being called the first expectation that we must go all out for God. My fellow men, listen to this. Real men go all out for God. In life, in love, in achievements, and in joy. Go all out for God. In life, in love, in achievements, and in joy. Oh yes, I want to hope and believe that all of us are real men. God's hardest task, I think if you ask me as a priest, is to get us moving on the right direction. It is the hardest task of God. I think so. And if you ask me why, I'll tell you why. And you can ask any priest you meet. You can ask any pastor you meet. The most difficult apostolate, or so I think, I could also be wrong, is apostolate to men. And it is not true that uh, statistically that men are a few. It is not true. Those of you who have done real science of statistics, <laughs> if you have studied demography, you will know that men are not as few as propagandas or propagandists want us to believe. They are not. <laughs> Maybe one day you'll be shocked to know that men are very many. They are not few. <laughs> they are not. Men are there in their numbers. But if you ask the priests and the pastors, and the bishops, anybody who is managing a church, they will tell you that to get men together to walk on the same direction, hey, it is a kibarua. Kibarua in English, it is an assignment, a huge assignment. But God is not scared. Dear men, God is not scared. Allow me to use this platform to encourage all the priests and the pastors and bishops to let you know, please don't give up. Even God sometimes have a difficult task 
to, to make all of us to face the same direction and do the same task. So I hope that uh, this gives us the morale to continue preaching to men, to continue ministering to you men without getting tired. Just as Israel, men can get sidetracked. And when men get sidetracked, they only need God to get back. Not anything else, not anyone else. They need God to get back. That's why I'm saying, dear men, let us have a conversation so that we can invoke the name of God that those of us who have gotten lost to come back and be one because God wants us to be one. In the past two weeks, I have had a conversation with four Catholic priests who want to quit priesthood. Four Catholic priests and one deacon. They, I, I have a number of religious women, sisters and nuns. The same conversation. And I remember the, the word I keep telling those priests and the religious who tell me, who share with me that sentiment or those sentiments. And I tell them that there is no accidental vocation. God never gave you a vocation by mistake. There is no accidental um, vocation. We may be mismanaging what God gave us. And so I, I encourage them and I tell them, please go and pray over it. I'll pray for you. It is not true that you're in the wrong place. It is not true. There could have been some miscalculations along the formation years, whatever the case. But the, my point is very simple. We need, when we are sidetracked, because even as a priest, I can get sidetracked. When I am sidetracked, I need God. The problem we have, and dear men, please allow me to tell you this. The problem we have with us men is that we get lost in the midst of ourselves. It is becoming increasingly difficult for men to correct each other. So a man will get lost in the midst of men. I give you some examples. A man will know that a fellow man is struggling with alcohol. And they may even know that their health is failing them. Yet the same same men will indulge this fellow in the same liquor that is killing him. So men who have died of alcoholism have died in the midst of men. A married man will visit other men with a side cheek. And these men know that he's married and they know the wife and they'll keep quiet. They'll never talk about it. Dear men, this is the challenge that we need to take. We, we need, because we have realized that with each other, we cannot get back. In fact, I always say uh, with a lot of authority that uh, it is easy for a man to get lost in the midst of other men than anywhere else. Why? Because sometimes we close our eyes to the evils. Maybe we close one, we open the other one. And then we say, man so and so. We know that he has a family. He has a wife and kids. But then we can see how he is concocting another family. And then we keep quiet. We don't talk about it. Maybe we even know men. This man is known to be heterosexual. But now on this other side, we know him as a homosexual. So we keep quiet. He's a married man with a wife. But he is a side chick, a man. But we keep quiet. We can't talk. We keep quiet. Again, we close our eyes completely. What does, that, what does that tell you? That tells you that for us men, it, it is now proven we do not need each other to get back on track. Because we have betrayed each other. We have let each other down. In fact, we have let our women down. We have let our children down. Let's get back to God. A, a man who has strayed, a man who has sidetracked, needs God, only God, to get back on track. Dear men, let's run to God. 
there we cannot get lost. The good thing with him, he will never judge us. The good thing with him, he will never ostracize us. The good thing with him, he will never condemn us. Dear men, please let us get back. There is freedom to those who have gone back to their father. There is salvation to those who have gone back to their father. There is restoration to those who have gone back to their father. Dear men, let us listen to the, to the voice of God. Let us listen. Let's go all out to go for God. Let's go out. Our brothers are not making things easier for us. Some of our men are just consumers of our goodness. Others are just escapists. Others are just, um, uh, we call them what? Um, uh, you know, they, they are just conformists. conformists. They don't want to change anything. It can't be like that. It can't be like that. Athana, it can't be like that. We have to, because we, you have known uh, men who should have corrected you and they didn't. Others are opportunists. They eat you, they milk you dry, and they leave you, they leave you for dead. Let us get back to God. Let us get back to God. Today we can assure each other. We do not need each other to get back to God because we have let each other down. Allah, let us appreciate that fact. Dear men, we have let each other down. We have broken our families when we are together. We have estranged our children when we are together. We have, we have mismanaged our health when we are together. We have mismanaged our businesses when we are together. We have mismanaged our finances when we are together. In fact, we don't need each other as it is. Strictly speaking, we don't need each other for redemption. We need God. We need God. One day I'll tell you a story of a certain preacher and uh, one of the congregants. One day, before I celebrate my 90th birthday, because it is a scandalous story. But I'll tell you one day, I'm called Father CK. You know I'm capable of telling, telling you a story that is scandalous. <laughs> Who? Aha! Tomorrow it is Sunday. So I want to, to stop it at that. The conversation continues. So we'll pick this conversation on Monday. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. I remain your priest and servant, Father CK, a man seated here. Thank you. And I, today I have a cup of tea, so uh, I am enjoying myself <laughs> as I go back to God. 